Pete. Peace, peace. Shalom, shalom. Shalawa. Assalamu alaikum. And welcome to another day to labor in the vineyard of the Most High. With your brother. Another day to get in the glorious word. Let's see what the most I got to serve. And what we eating on the day is pathways of mind that we got to go through to unlock the light body. And remember, as we go through some of these lessons, some of these things we going to be able to grasp now, and some of these things, it's not going to be really explained to us or we ain't going to be able to grasp it, but so much until the entities get here and set up the academies of light that we read about in the keys. All right? So certain things we're going to be able to grasp now, but the things that we can't, they're going to come teach us so that we can fully open up and unlock. So, ain't no big thing. It's somewhere it don't make sense now, but you just absorbing the seeds right now. And we see it's on all of the movies. So, it's, it's a visual way that we can visualize it, but some of these things physically, we, we just ain't going to be able to unlock yet. But it's all good. We're going to eat the seeds and let them plant and let those on the other side water them and give us a little better understanding and if if you ain't seen yet the entities gave us a good example of how the worldly mindset operate yesterday oh it's in the community section i had an interview with this gentile atheist and i know that the entity set it up because i didn't know who he was his assistant emailed me last week but like hey we would love if you would sit down and have a discussion with us about your book. He said a guy had a copy of the spiritual dope. And that, that his assistant told me he was an atheist, but I mean, he made me no different. So I was like, cool, i go ahead. Because I understand that those on the other side set this up. When it was for us to be able to see. There's a difference between our reality, the dimension that we in, in the world of the Gentiles. Because that's how the majority of the Gentiles think. And it also shows you how the Negroes, who then got programmed away from their true identity, how they then took on the image and likeness of the Gentiles. All right? So, But at the same time, I'm sure the entity sent us there to fish. Because there's a couple of Gentiles that want knowledge and understanding and they can perceive that it's something more to life. So while giving us discernment, we also then fished out a couple seeds from over there. And at the same time, it shows us the timeline. Where judgment start in the house of Israel. Israel, judgment start with us. It gonna come to us first, but now they carrying the teachings out to the Gentiles. So now they getting their chance they hear the knowledge before everything comes falling down, before Babylon, Babylon is falling, like it tells us in Revelation. No, they get their chance to either accept it or reject it. All right? But that's just something that the Spirit then set up for us to be able to see that all oh, this is coordinated from on high. All right? But let's eat. Let's go into the key. The keys. The keys of Enoch, the book of knowledge. If you still ain't got it and you still want a copy, go to keysofenoch.org or just email me. And I'll um, send you the link so you can get your copy. Because if you try to go to Amazon or eBay, you're going to get bust up for a couple hundred. But on that site, you can get it for 60, 50 or 60. All right, we're going to key 313. Page 472, starting at verse 36. Man, too, has mind over matter abilities. Man has mind over matter abilities. 
Meaning the mind can control the matter. Which, if you study Lumeria and Alexis, these were the things, the abilities that we had at the beginning. Man, too, has mind over matter abilities and an infinite resourcefulness in the interplay of light. When he seeks the treasury of light that Metatron reveals from the richness of light beyond physical limitation, meaning the richness of light on the other side of the veil or the astral realm. 38. This key here is saying that space, time, and energy, another trinity, space, time, and energy are pieces of a greater whole which modulates consciousness grids. These grids are so powerful that they can control the realities of the third and fourth dimensions. Through the pineal area, the mind's eye, or the third eye network, the framework of our biological system operating within the dynamic aspects of gravity waves and light waves can experience the boundaries of our consciousness zone. So again, through the pineal area, the crystal seed, the mind's eye, or our third eye network, which is the framework of our biological system, can experience the boundaries of our consciousness zone. Meaning you can expand out of this consciousness time zone through the mind's eye, through the astral realm. Thus, the brotherhoods can reprogram and educate the consciousness of man via his very biotransducer mechanism, meaning through your mind's eye, experiencing the overlap of consciousness. Meaning, you can go past this physical realm into the spiritual realm, and you can maneuver, all right? And like we've been seeing in plenty of lessons, that's how they talk to us. And that's the way that we're going to eventually get back to talking to each other, all right? Everything is through the portal. The brotherhoods have a way of projecting mental signals through the magnetic shield of the earth by light images, the pictographs that we didn't read about, by light images so that they can be picked up by our mind's perceptual apparatus, by our mind's eye, that third eye network. Yet, this would not be possible if light were not the foundation through which and by which all higher forms of energy are transduced. In clearing the space-time grid of our present physical universe, Enoch said that the mind must go through certain basic transformations. The mind must go through certain basic transformations. According to the Eastern scriptures, these basic transformations consist of nine basic pathways you have to work through in your consciousness evolution in order to create a compatible network for spiritual provisions. Thus, the time locks in the mind are thrown open. All right? So now we're going to go through the nine pathways to unlocking the spatial provisions, all right? The spiritual provisions and how we can open up the locks on our mind that keep us trapped in a certain consciousness time zone, all right? We can go beyond this physical consciousness time zone and remember that the spirit operate differently than in the last lesson, when we was talking about how we've been programmed to operate in a black or white, this way or that way, a straight, leaner year frame of thought. But that ain't the way that the spirit operate. All right? So we being reprogrammed to operate not the way that the flesh conceive things in a linear fashion. No, nah, we're going back to operating through the spirit. All right? 
First, in creating a compatible network for spatial provisions, you grow through what the early Tibetan teachings called the way of sin of the prediction. And sin, and so sin means spirit or divinity. So it's the way of the spirit of prediction or the way of the divinity of prediction. All right? In this process, your mind sees the events of cause and effect and begins to transcend these events, which make up the mechanic, mechanistic barrier. All right? So what we're doing is we taking away the barriers that's been placed in our mind. In this process, your mind see the events of cause and effect and begin to transcend these events which make up the mechanical barrier. Here the mind is aided to be, go beyond the static levels of thinking and to live in divinity with Yahweh. Second, and creating a compatible network for spiritual provisions, for spatial provisions, you go through the way of sin of the visual world. And breaking through the mechanistic functions of the vi visual world, the material form is seen as the house for superior consciousness states. And breaking through the mechanistic functions of the visual world, the material form is seen as just a house for superior consciousness states. All right, the temples. The temples are houses for the spirit, like it teaches us in Corinthians. And seeing the difference between I have a body and I am a body, you can use your light for the benefit of all beings. All right? And that's, that's a big difference right there. Like I was telling the Gentile yesterday, you, you, you don't, you, we've been taught to identify as the body instead of identifying as the spirit operating through the body. Using the body as just a way to navigate down here in this realm. But at the same time, we can operate through this realm in a different dimension through our true nature, which is just the spirit man. But when you have been taught that, it's not possible. All right? And that's why belief is, is first and foremost. What you don't believe, you cannot achieve. You cannot use what you don't believe. All right? And that's what has blocked off a lot of us from being able to elevate spiritually because we've been locked in the carnality due to the teachings of Christianity, the teachings of the Gentiles and the teachings of the camps, all right? But now, as we, we continue through the path of self-realization, it's taking us back to knowledge of self, which is knowledge of the God, all right? Because we are a drop of the Supreme, but we just gotta remember it, and then we able to operate differently. Like Philippians tell us, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, all right? He didn't identify as the flesh. He knew who he was. Third, in creating a compatible network for spatial provisions, you go through the way of sin of the illusion. When your expanding mind is aware of its own power of extension, you can traverse the lower third and fourth dimensional creations. You then understand how your physical vehicle contains many levels of life as an ongoing assembly of nuclei, microtubes, and neurons. Even while in the 10 space-time singularities of the lower universal reality, you can experience the reality behind the illusion. You can experience the reality, the spiritual realm, behind the illusion and saying that there are higher orders of consciousness which colonize your thoughts. There are higher orders of consciousness which colonize your thoughts. 
And that's what the fallen masters and those that work with them then lock us into. But once we break through that barrier, then those on high can work with us to elevate us. All right? Because the higher orders are not just the righteous men, it's also the fallen masters. They still higher orders of consciousness. But depending on your vibration, and like we read in the last lesson about your light, is which order is going to come to you. All right? And that's why you got to renew your mind by transforming your thoughts, which come from God in the portals. You have to guard the portals in order to elevate. And the portals being the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, the snake, and the treasure box. As you guard the portals, your consciousness starts to show. All right? Because all of the portals is ways to the soul. And that's what the fallen ones is after. All right? They all teach us the eyes is the key to the soul, but it's all of the portals. All right? All of the portals allow them to connect with that inner being. All right? But if you guard the portals, then you can allow the righteous higher entities to connect to take you higher, higher. All right? They elevate us. There are higher orders of consciousness, righteous and wicked ones, which colonize our thoughts, depending on our vibration and our light code. Like mitochondria, performing colonizing functions within your body for the benefit of many bodies. All right? Fourth, and creating the compatible network for spatial provisions you go through the way of sin of existence and the extension beyond the vital cycles of your immediate physical form your mind begins to deal with the entities and the extension beyond the vital cycles of your immediate biological form your flesh your mind begins to deal with the entities who are in the intermediate state, the middle state, the spiritual realm, between the veil, which is between the vital cycles of death and rebirth. This means that as the cycles of natural phenomena become faster or slower, or as the phenomena being studied in the physical self become impossible to observe with your unaided senses, your mind will connect with the projected imagery of the messenger and guides observing and calculating your spiritual evolution. All right, and this time to the lessons we didn't did on light codes and how. They give us visions to elevate us. But when your mind is filled up with the filth of the world, then they're not going to be able to get through, it, through to you. All right? Because you ain't purified your mind's eye network yet. That crystal seed is still filled up with filth. All right? And, that's, and the things that you listen to bring imagery into your mind also. All right? So it's more portals than just the eyes. But all of those portals clog up the, 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 the portal right here to where you can't receive. Let's look at the picture right here that they got in the book. All right? And you see the portal. All right? And you see what they got, the little lady that looked like a, I don't know, a wizard or something right there. But that's symbolic of the entities that penetrate that bell right there, the mind's eye, all right? And you see at the back of the head, you see the spirit, all right? So you're going to attract whatever your vibration is, all right? Like it like it said, like we read that, um, what, what, what was it at? There are higher orders of consciousness which colonize your thoughts. And that's what you see by the wizard at the front of the mind's eye right there. It's colonizing the thoughts, and it's either gonna colonize them to go higher, or it's gonna keep you locked into a lower vibration. 
And above, you see the Merkaba vehicle. The Merkaba, the light body. All right? And above, you see the Kether, the crown. And remember we read in the last lesson about the, the crown being the capstone, the pyramid. The pyramid capstone that allows you to connect to those on the other side. All right? And you see his mind's eye right there being open. All right? And once that's open, that Merkaba, that vehicle right there, that energy body, that light body can be accessed. All right? But it all starts with your thoughts being colonized to be able to go higher. All right? And as we get into... We're going to go back into some of Yogananda teachings. We we done with that book, The Resurrection of the Christ Within. We're going to go back to that because through his teachings, the Kriya, the Kriya Yoga... It's different than the regular yoga that the Gentiles teach. And even the Gentiles that teach the Kriya, you got to understand something about the Gentiles. The Gentile cannot access certain levels of information. And all of the master teachers, if you've been studying for a while, you know they'll all tell you. We're we not the same as Gentiles. It's certain levels that Gentiles can't go beyond. All right? But Yogananda had teachings that teach you how to pull in that energy and to use it so that you can begin to feel how the energy is the true you all right the consciousness level all right it teaches you how is a is a way with the creel all right i'm gonna show you an example how they do it all right the portals they close the portals the thumbs the thumbs go in the ears these two Cover the eyes to make it jet black to where all you see is blackness. So it helps the imagery come through. The ears being God, it help you hear the vibration within. It help you hear the vibration within. All right. And that's a technique in Creole that they use. And some of them, they, they use the other fingers in the front to hit. All right, so... You hit the nose, and you hit the nose. And that way, all of it is blocked off. So after you do your breath, the inhale, you hit the, you hit, you plug up the portals. All right? And then you exhale, but you keep the eyes and the ears closed. And it allows you to hear the vibration within. And it also keeps the extra light off so that the mind's eye is is just is just black, all right. Because sometimes when we close our eyes to meditate, it's still light coming through, depending on whether it's day outside or you in a dark room or whatever. But with the fingers over the eyes, it keeps it jet black, so that the imagery they come through, you can see it more clear. But we'll 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 get there. We'll get there. I'm gonna have a conversation with our yogi that been into the Creel since the '70s, and I'm gonna let him. Explain how we can use the techniques to go farther. All right, but let's let keep going. Verse fifty-one. Fifth, and creating a compatible network for spatial provisions, you go through the way of virtuous virtuous adherence, and receiving the projected imagery, and receiving the projected imagery from the brothers of light. You can turn your mind from the affairs of the world and arouse feelings of joy because of your salvation over the material body of form. This is accomplished through the identification of your body of light with the spiritual intelligence that will guide your mind through the interplay of the higher and lower worlds. Six, and creating a compatible network for the spatial provisions. You go through the way of the great ascetics. All right? Ascetics, those with severe self-discipline. All right? All of the teachings tell us to be a set-apart people. To be set-apart, you got to have self-discipline. These yet-to-be-explored frontiers are the worlds of your immediate over-self. Your immediate over self. And if you new to the journey with us, 
uh, go back and check out the lessons on the over self. All right, we got one called the over self in the multiverse. And if you go through the community section, Sister Jones had had typed it up with all of the precepts so that you can use that as a study guide also. But if you need, if you want the study guide, you can just ask in the comment section and I'll I, I post it to you or whatnot where you can get it. But yeah, the over self. We got an over self body because we multi dimensional beings. The yet to be explored frontiers are the worlds of your immediate over self, which is itself evolving towards pure divinity. Here, you can experience the two in one that is the unity of the over self. In the human self, all the memories hidden from knowledge by the physical identity are released through the over self, which apportions the time and energy to stimulate memory instantaneously out of the sluggishness of the material worlds. All right, so our over self, everything is captured in our spirit. All right. And you heard people talking about remembering previous incarnations and information. The higher you go spiritually and you're able to connect with that higher self, that over self, which is you, then you'll be able to unlock certain information that your carnal mind is not going to be able to, to get you. All right. But as we go higher and higher, we get back more of our memory and we start to be able to piece things together more and more clearly. It helps us rise even faster. And that's part of the process with our awakening, quickening now. And because as you unlock spiritually, those on the other side start to work with you to where your elevation is gonna come a whole lot quicker to where things is gonna start to be being revealed, things about yourself as well as spiritual abilities and understanding that is just gonna be enhanced. A lot quicker. Through the projected imagery of the brothers and masters of light, your human self and over self unite where your mind can work on levels beyond the limits of an over self program and co reigning with masters of the office of the Christ. All right? Masters of the office of the Christ consciousness, that higher level. Here, you exist in the over self, progressing into the Christ, Christed over self. At this point of being, known as the reassociated level, you begin to work directly with the Paradise Trinity and move towards per, pure unification with the deity of the Father. Let's get a precept. Let's go to page 545. All right, where well it said to work directly with the Paradise Trinity as you go higher. All right, page 545, key 319, starting at verse 1. God loves his people, Israel, the people of light. And because he loves them, he has promised the ascension. He has promised the ascension to them. From this world of physical limitation and negation, so that they can be like the brothers and masters of life. Throughout our present redemptive age, the spiritual Israel exemplified through the work of Enoch, Elijah, and Yahshua, Jesus. Pause. You see the big three, all right? And I'm gonna give you what the Spirit gave me. Enoch came and went as he pleased. All right. Enoch didn't die. Elijah came and he called on the brotherhood to come get him. He left in a whirlwind, meaning he left in a chariot. All right. He was a master of the light. Jesus, Yahshua, Elisha, remember Elijah and his disciple Elisha. He taught Elisha things that he couldn't teach nobody else. And remember the lessons we did on how the brotherhood know who, depending on your light, they know who they can take to higher levels. And to me, what I didn't gather, what I perceive, this is what made Yahshua the conquering lion that unlocked the seven seals. Because Elijah already was beyond that point. And that's why he said, ain't none greater 
Then John the Baptist, who was Elijah, sent back to prepare the way for him and his return. All right. But Elijah already had the ability to call the chariots to come get him. He was a master of his life. But when he had his time with Elisha, all right, who was Yahshua in his previous incarnation, he taught him. Because Yahshua had to go through everything that we went through down here in this realm so that he could become the master teacher, the master example. All right. He had to go through more than one incarnation. In his time period as Elisha, he had learning to do under Elijah. So that Elijah taught him how to master his life. But it wasn't until he came back as Jesus or Yahshua that he was able to completely break the seven seals and show it to his disciples that he had did it. And when, that's why he came back to them in his light body to show that he didn't unlock the seven seals. All right, the levels of consciousness to where his chakras was all aligned and that pyramid capstone, that eighth chakra, he had accessed it, all right? And he was able to come back to his disciples to show and prove that he knew what he was talking about and that that's why he is the truth, the way, and the light, all right? He broke the seven seals and he came to teach us. But he had to be taught to do it. He had to go through multiple incarnations. Elijah didn't have to do that. Enoch didn't have to do that. Krishna didn't have to do that. Asa, Osiris didn't have to do that. Yahshua was the one who took on that role right there of going through different incarnations, getting built up to show his brothers and sisters that, nah, all y'all got the same abilities that I got. But you got to be taught and trained how to do it to unlock your light within. All right? That's why, that's the Trinity all about, it's, Trinity is all throughout the scriptures. Like we just read about space, time, and energy. That's a Trinity. All right? The Paradise Psalms, Enoch, Elijah, and Yahshua is a Trinity. All right? But, Again, throughout our present redemptive age, the spiritual Israel exemplified through the work of Enoch, Elijah, and Yahshua proved that physical ascension is possible in this dimension of reality for all the world to experience. All right? Or all of Israel. The Gentiles have to be retrained completely before it's possible with them. All we have to do is go back and remember who we are. Like Abdullah always tell us, family, remember who you are. All right. Once you remember who you are, you no longer acting like the Gentiles with that Gentile mindset that we seen in the video yesterday. Where you only can think of money and politics and things of the world, science of the world. You disconnected from the spirit. Nah. You got to come back home. Verse 57. 7. And creating a compatible network for spatial provisions, you go through the way of pure sound. At the highest levels of humble service to the living creation of which you are a part, there suddenly emerges the activity of the Hayos HaKadesh, which is the highest servants. Who show mastery over mystery. Mastery over mystery. In the education of your soul, you can experience pure sound as the highest vibrational resonance connected with a divine thought form which recharges your thoughts. The key word is connected with a divine thought form which recharges your thoughts with energy dispensations from the treasury of light. All right, let's get a precept. Let's go to page 366, verse 46. We read this the other day, but see how the lessons connect. And remember, and they just, we, what we just read about is the way of pure sound and how sound is used as a vibrational resonance to elevate us. Verse 46. The order of the Elim represent the sustainers of the vibrations of sonic energy 
used in the music of the spheres. The Aline translate the father's messages into units of sound and color, which are used for communication. Sound and color are used for communication between the network of the hosts. And we are a part of the network of hosts. Once you come to realize who you are, remember the Lord of hosts. All of us are part of the network of hosts. All right? All of the workers on both sides of the veil. The music of the spheres continually weed the fabric of creation with the thought forms of the Father. All right? Music is to elevate your consciousness, but it also can heal your temple. All right? That's why you heard him talk about how jazz music. It got the ability to program you in a certain way. All right? It programs your thoughts. Your thoughts are activated by certain sounds. And like we just seen, it's a, it's a, it's a level of beings that that's their job. To put out certain sound into certain beings so that it can attune your vibration. When your ears get to ringing and you hear that vibration, yeah, that's a sound check. All right? Everything has been distorted in our reality. All right? But sound, that's why people that's called to make music, when you use it for wicked purposes, it go back to what we have read about your consciousness being colonized by a higher thought form, which a higher thought form did not mean righteous entities. It could be the fallen entities. And then they colonize a lot of the thoughts of the musicians. To we don't realize the power of music, the power of sound and the word put together. We just read about the power of sound. Then you throw the word on top of the sound, which the word, the word is the strongest force in creation. All right. Let's get the definition of the treasury of life. Treasury of life. A realm of heavenly habitation where the elect of the word work with all tablets and documents and assimilating thought forms into programs which will promote the metamorphosis, the transformation of old worlds and define the configuration of new worlds. All right. That's part of renewing your mind. Your mind is a world of its own. The most esteemed way in which interest into the treasury can be made is through the practice of benevolence, righteousness, and the promotion of peace between man and man, and man in the law of God, the law of life as practiced in the higher worlds. All right. Here, the laws of light use the sound which causes divinities and their realms to spread forth in all directions and to operate as instructors and teachers of the hierarchy of Yahweh or Yahweh, pouring forth rays of light. Eight, and creating a compatible network for spatial provisions. You go through the way of the primeval shin. In the procedure of over self unfoldment, the Christ over self begins to understand that a spiritual plan is meaningful to the sequence of the light body, the Adam Kyle mind. Only if it is in balance with the actual power of the Father's presence, which is the Holy Spirit, Shekinah. All right? Your plan is null and void if you cannot connect to the Spirit. And that's the difference between spiritual Israel and carnal Israel. Carnal Israel is not led by the presence, which is the spirit. Because the spirit takes you into higher levels of light. All right? Because it allows you to connect with those on the other side. They're going to help upgrade you. All right? It is through the Holy Spirit Shekinah that the Christ over self opens to other Christ over selves. And unfolds into multiple divine appearances in incarnations. The overcells can project physical bodies into worlds. 
The overcells can project physical bodies into worlds. If you ain't seen that movie, everything, everywhere, all at once, that's what it shows. Just like Doctor Strange in the multiverse. All right? The overcells, just like on the Spider-Man, the last Spider-Man that came out last year, showed the same thing. Well, all three of them ended up in the same realm. All right? They were all different incarnations of that one overself but they had all ended up in the same reality together showing how there are multiple we are multi-dimensional beings operating in different worlds and there's an overself that connects the bodies all right that they shoot out from study on the overself we're gonna get more understanding on the overself as we go along too we're gonna do a we already did one lesson, but we'll go back into some more to get better clarity. But let's keep eating. The overcells can project physical bodies into worlds and transmit information in any conceivable volume or way. Ninth, and creating a compatible network for spatial provisions, you go through the way of the supreme and bringing together your Christ overself. With the Holy Spirit Shekinah, you form a working relationship with the Hayos HaKadosh, whereby your Christ Holy Spirit, meaning your Christ consciousness and Holy Spirit unity is ready to ascend through the immediate Adam Cadman, the immediate pre-existent body of light creation to work with the divine mind and programs of Elohistic creation. Meaning, worlds of the Elohim. That's what Elohistic creation is. Worlds of the Elohim. Here, the substance of the great supreme becoming vehicle is the substance of insight. We have to have insight. Contemplation. Practice, practice, practice. Practice is the key to self-realization. Especially when you get into doing yoga and meditation and all of that. And even with scriptures, repetition help bring it in to where your spirit can eat it. All right? And it started to make more sense. And result as the way of light in the three in one unfoldment. And penetrating the veils of the lower heavens, you are trinitized. You are a trinitized unity of being, a multi dimensional being, basically. Becoming and being in between being. In becoming as you work with the Trinity of Trinities the Father Son and Shekinah now right or in other words you work with the entities you are the Son that's transforming and you need the spirit the Shekinah to make the transformation all right the Elohim, the Benai Elohim, the entities are the Father Universe. We are the being in the Son Universe attempting to connect and elevate to the Father Universe. But we need the Mother, the Motherly Presence, the Holy Spirit, which nurtures us to be able to go back and connect with those in the Father Universe. All right? The Father, Son, and Shekinah that make the idea of love suddenly enlarge, burst with new energy and begin to replicate an image of the Father's love, the Father's life. These are the necessary steps to complete the reprogramming and resurrection of life. These are the steps that Yahushua, Yahshua, Yeshia, Isa, Emmanuel, Matzah, went through to be reprogrammed and to resurrect unto life. They provide an equipped consciousness to travel for millions of years, like on Star Trek, or for a few minutes beyond the mountain top of the physical veil of light so that the light may radiate through you for Alba. Wakanda forever in all garments of life. All right. 
So it's all right. It ain't all got to make sense now. Just eat the seeds and let those on the other side nurture them. Once we make fertile ground to them by being open. All right. And as you watch different movies, you're going to start to see some of these, these seeds in these movies now. But... We got to read it to get the understanding to now our spirit man is going to point it out to us when we go back and look at certain movies. All right. And even when you go back into reading the other scriptures, such as the Bible, you'll be able to see it in a whole new light. Because the spirit is going to point out to where the higher teachings was coded into the lower teachings. But they just had not brought out to us. All right. But we get prepared. We in a prerequisite course of light right now. Get acclimated and familiar with the processes so that when the chariots come and crack the sky, hopefully all our color codes be right so that they can bring us on and retrain us in the academies of light that they're going to set up. All right? Peace.